What is mindfulness? Well, let me share with you some of the definitions that are floating around from different experts. First, mindfulness is the human ability to be fully present, aware of where we are and what we're doing, and not overly reactive or overwhelmed by what's going on around us. Another one is it's the ability to focus on being intensely aware of what you're sensing and feeling in the moment without interpretation, without judgment. Also described as the idea of learning how to be fully present and engaged in the moment, aware of your thoughts and feelings without distraction or judgment. And finally, it's maintaining a moment by moment awareness of our thoughts, our feelings, our bodily sensations, and the surrounding environment through a gentle, nurturing lens. So what are the core themes in that? Well, what it means is that it's that ability to focus right now in this present moment. Doesn't mean that you don't have thoughts. No, it just says thoughts pop up, but you don't get caught in them. You're not second guessing yourself. You're not beating yourself up. You just notice them and are, observing them. It's the role of the observer to be fully present. And this happens um, all sorts of times in our life. Think of times where it's been spontaneously what's been taking you into the moment. Think about a beautiful sunset or perhaps falling in love, the birth of a child, being in nature. These are times when it seems like time slows down and you're not up in your head analyzing what's going on. Is this right or is this wrong? Should I do this? Whatever. But you're simply, simply present. I think about when I'm a kid, was a kid and I used to go out alone in the canoe and just get lost on the rivers, the streams, the lakes. And I didn't really know about mindfulness. I didn't know about presence then, but I just got into that space. I simply was there. I wasn't sitting thinking about stuff. I was just feeling the energy of nature and being there, being present. And it just completely was a time when I was in that moment without thoughts, without analyzing it, just being there and feeling and sensing. Think about times when you've had experiences like that as well. Now, one of the things that may help you understand it better is that we've actually got three levels of mind. Okay. Carl Jung said, we've got our conscious mind, your unconscious and the superconscious mind. So your conscious mind, which is what everyone thinks they are, is really all it can do is focus on seven things, plus or minus two. That's it. That's why phone numbers generally with seven digits, because that's what you could remember. So if you're thinking about stuff that happened yesterday, a week ago, a month ago, and you're beating yourself up for it, I should have done this, I should have said that. If you're worried about what's coming in the future, if you're thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to deal with that? A lot of those seven chunks are in the past and the future. They are not right now, right here in this moment. So that conscious mind, what it's about is bringing those seven chunks into the moment out of those thoughts. Now, the challenge with that is your unconscious mind is what runs most of you. Think about it. If your body temperature, do you have to think to maintain it at a certain level? And yet it stays the same. What happens 
when it gets cold, we shiver, we get goosebumps, it raises the temperature. What happens when it gets too hot? We sweat. We don't do this consciously. It happens automatically. It's run by your unconscious. And what happens is your unconscious mind gets all sorts of tapes from when we were a kid that run in a loop. And these pop up different times. And what you can do is you can consciously get caught up and react in them about, oh, I'm, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to handle. And then you start your conscious mind on that as opposed to just, oh, noticing, okay, that's a thought. No judgment, just being present with it. Um, so you, you sort of have to realize what's going on. And it's really about a system of habits. What do you focus on? You build a habit of either focusing here now, or you build a habit of living in your head and analyzing the past or worrying about the future. Like if you were to cross your arms right now, okay? Just cross your arms. Now, cross them the other way. First of all, uh, a lot of people wind up putting their arms back the way they first started. But if you get to cross it the other way, it's going to feel weird. So if you're used to all your life living in your head and so on, the, the feeling, the sense of being in this moment is going to seem really, really strange to you. There's um, a wonderful scene uh, in um, Eat, Pray, Love where in the movie, Julia Roberts is in India and she's sent to go into this room to meditate for an hour. So she goes and sits and you can hear the voice in her head on in the film. And what happens is she's going on and on about, oh my God, this person in front of me is looking like a diva and knows exactly what they're doing, da, da, da. Uh, the, and going on and on about all this stuff. And then she finally goes, oh my gosh, it must be you know, must have finished an hour and she looks over the clock and it hasn't even been a minute. And that's where your conscious mind can get into all these loops to be present. It doesn't necessarily mean to be silent, but if thoughts pop up, you just notice it. You don't get caught up in it and go on a whole roll and you, ju you just allow it to be and it drifts away. And over time, you'll find there's less and less and less. And I'll actually show you in one of these videos coming up how to turn off that self-talk. There's a Jedi mind trick that I've learned that that's incredibly powerful where you can turn it off anytime you want. Okay, so the interesting thing is a lot of times people mix up mindfulness and meditation and yoga uh, one thing you need to understand is that mindfulness is not meditation. Mindfulness is not yoga. Uh, they, they are complementary. I'd say, for me, I would say meditation is a type of mindfulness. Uh, it, it requires mindfulness, but, but there are other forms of mindfulness in that and it's just a habit of what you're focusing on are you focusing on what's happening now or are you focusing on stuff that you you know your your monkey mind takes you off to in all different directions so this habits now uh one of the things you've got to realize is you remember i said there's these old tapes that are going on the old habits that you have are uh, like old tapes running in your head. It takes work to shift them, to change them. Uh, that's why they call meditation or mindfulness a practice. You're practicing and you're getting better and better. Uh, you want to you know, learn how to change it, but you've also got to be gentle with yourself. You've spent your whole life learning to think the way you do. Don't beat yourself up for it because then you've just jumped out of mindfulness again. You found another doorway out by beating yourself up. You need to uh, be gentle with yourself. You've invested your whole life learning this way without realizing of thinking this way of thinking. Now, let's build a habit to start to shift. 
step by step by step. And it's different ways to do that. It's uh, different ways to learn to silence that, 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 that talk. Uh, I think it's Joyce Meyer said, if you know how to worry, you know how to meditate. Because worrying is just thinking the same thing over and over and over again. Whereas meditation is focusing on one thing over and over again, being present in this moment. And it's the same skill, the same habit of focus. It's just instead of focusing on the thoughts, you're focusing now. So for example, right now, if I was to ask you to become aware of how your clothing feels on you, to start to notice around you, what are the noises, what are the things that are going on around you? How warm is the temperature? You know, perhaps you can even start to become aware of the beating of your heart. These are all things that are in the present moment. And remember, your conscious mind can only focus on seven chunks of information, plus or minus two, that's it. So as you bring your focus to these things, there's no space for those thoughts to get caught in your conscious mind. Now, at first, you'll only be able to focus on the present, on your breathing, whatever it is for, uh, you know, for a few seconds or a moment or two. But with practice, you start to extend it more and more and more. And I actually physiologically start to feel a shift where I am much more at peace and I can start to really be present in a whole different way. And now, because I've practiced it for many, many years, it's very easy for me to get into that state. Now, if you would like to find out more uh, about mindfulness and then some ways to really bring it into your life, all you have to do is go to say no to stress.com. Uh, ever since the pandemic hit, I have made that my full mindfulness 101 program is normally a hundred bucks. I've made it available free because I know so many people are needing these skills now. So just go to say no to stress.com and you can download the full uh, Mindfulness 101 program for free. I'll see you in there.